In this episode, I get to interview Jimmy. Now, Jimmy is a really amazing person in the Alaskan community. He lives on the other side of the world, but he is the founder and creator of Atlastic, another up and rising Atlassian community that I recommend you go check out after you finish this interview. Now, Jimmy is a wealth of information, and I really, really enjoyed my interview with him because he just provided such an interesting perspective into the history of Atlassian, how teams over the years have used Atlassian, and I just appreciated that he took an hour out of his time to just walk us through his perspective of this amazing community and these tools that we all love. Are you tired of struggling to present your data in a clear and visually compelling way within Jira? Look no further. Introducing custom charts for Jira by our good friends over at Old Street Solutions. They provide the ultimate solution for powerful and customizable data visualization within Jira. Old Street Solution is the official sponsor for our Thursday at Lasting Community Member Interviews. Use the link in the description down below to start a free trial of custom charts for Jira today. Please enjoy the interview, and if you do, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like if you get value out of the interview, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let us know in the comment section down below. Hey everyone, welcome back to another interview here. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Jimmy Wakeman. And this is a very special interview as well because for the last maybe year, Jimmy's been a huge supporter of the channel. He's been there commenting, giving me really, really thought out, very carefully crafted comments on my YouTube channel. Um, big supporter here, but also keeps me in check. Jimmy likes to make sure that he keeps me balanced and that I'm not just throwing garbage at you all. And uh, he, he, I definitely appreciate um, challenges from from jimmy because it's what ma makes us as members of the community stronger right it helps us challenge ourselves and grow and investigate and then go get facts and data and really kind of have a healthy uh, discussion around topics that we all care about deeply so jimmy you're probably the only person i think um, on the internet that goes and challenges me at the level that you do so thank you so much i really do appreciate every single time um, that you're like, hey, this doesn't seem right. <laughs> what what did you consider this? Did you consider that right? Because it helps me grow. It helps me go, oh, there is a different way of doing it. And then, but it also helps me ground myself and like, this is my experience as well, right? This is what I've seen in the wild in the industry. So it's healthy to kind of uh, debate on that as well. Yeah. But anyways, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time. You are what, nine, eight, nine hours ahead of me. So um, it's early for me, but nice afternoon for you and so thank you again for joining um the the channel here in the interview yeah nice to be here alex and to finally meet you in digital life at least uh, yeah i missed you. i was really hoping you'd be a team but uh it, I, yeah, know I, have no, <laughs> I got buried at work uh, i just started a new uh job uh in january actually so that's why i've been uh, i've been head deep in that one uh ever yeah, since yeah. i started I know how that gets. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to kick things off slow and um, just walk us through your origin story. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved in this Atlassian stuff? Um, feel free to talk about your community that you're building and, and whatever else is appropriate. But yeah, we just want to take us back to Jimmy's life here and how he got started with uh, with this world of Atlassian. Yeah. And my journey into Atlassian is a kind of weird one because uh, I'm... Uh, the kind of guy that is, I'm curious, so I jump around with all kinds of things. So I actually first encountered Atlassian in 2010. Uh, I had my own web hosting business and a, a regular hosting business. Uh, so I, I was looking for uh, something that could help me ground it because I had my own company. I studied at what I think is the equivalent of your college uh, full time. And I had a five year old at home at the same time. So I needed some way to coordinate myself. Uh, so I looked into Jira, it was one of the uh, things that people said this could be a good thing. And I actually didn't choose that one at that time. So I kind of looked at it and I said, no, not, not going to work for me right now. And then in 2011, uh, my, my younger brother died uh, and I kind of lost my footing in the world. So I decided I had to change my life. So I did a yes man. I don't know if you've seen that movie with Jim Carrey, uh, where he says yes to everything. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I actually I did that. that for almost a year. 
And I ended up doing all kinds of crazy things. And one of the things that I ended up doing was one of my clients uh, asked me, can't you come? We have one of the first e-commerce events here up north. And we would really like you to come and talk about newer web design. I was very much into conversion rate optimization in design and stuff. So I said yes, because I had to. It was my yes man year. And I, uh, I was terrified because I was bullied in school. I had all the negative experiences you can think about of public speaking. Uh, but I went there and I did my presentation. And it's actually on, on YouTube, if you want to check it out, my very first ever. And in the audience, I had the CEO of one of the largest fintech companies uh, in Sweden, Klarna. And I also had the, uh, the person that was in charge for uh, what would become the e-commerce guild, so to speak, for all of Sweden. And they both said, this is excellent. We need you to come and present for us. So I said, yes. And uh, I ended up getting a job at Klarna. And then when I had a big presentation at the big event, and the person I presented with also said, have you signed yet? So I said, no, I haven't signed yet. Uh, so then he said, you can't sign. You have to work with me. Uh, so I had a, a period there where I had to choose. So I chose to go with a, a consultant uh, company. And they had Jira and Confluence. They just started using it. So I ended up, uh, curious as I was, and since no one really knew how it worked, I went in and, and played around with it. And um, took about six months or so. Then I was responsible for Confluence. And then me and another colleague, we, we kind of shared the responsibility for, for GR for a while. And I think I did that for about three or four years, kind of just playing around, try learning tool. Uh, and then uh, we got bought up by Accenture and I ended up being the product lead for one of the biggest projects at H&M at the time, and that we were building a new sub brands for them. And we were between, I was in, in charge of the front end part and we were kind of a part between uh, the design agency and the implementation partner on the platform. And we didn't have any process. And we wanted to use Jira. So I spent about 500 hours uh, over time to actually build the processes, actually make it work for us. And uh, so I think that's when I really started to get into Jira. And that was around 2014, 2014, 2015 or so. And then uh, I ended up being doing it more or less on full time. When again I went to H and M, I become the uh, the product owner of their Jira instance, and I transformed uh, all of H and M then uh, with work processes and the design of of Jira. So that's kind of where I started off, and uh, in between I've done tons of other stuff. So I've been I usually my my bosses call me often the the Swiss army knife, because if, if you have a designer that needs something, I, I'm a designer. I, I've been uh, a digital designer for over 20 years. I'm a front-end developer, so I've been doing that for almost 30 years. Uh, I've been a project management. I've been a deployment management. Uh, everything that you can possibly think of, I, I've probably done practically for at least a couple of years. So that means also I'm very natural to sit on top on Jira because when people come and tell me I have issues, then I just say, I know, I used to be one of you, uh, so I know exactly what's hurting, so I can fix it for you. <laughs> so then, but so many years of experience and so many different like tech stacks and technologies and things of that nature, but like, wow, why, why create the Atlantic community? Well, that one actually came, uh, I always want to have something that I can build uh, on the side on my regular work because that way I can get my design skills kept up and I can also do my front end part. I can dive into new technologies. And I've been on the Atlassian community for quite a few years and it's always the same uh, problems that I see that it's scattered around, right? And it's hard to actually find what you're actually looking for. And people are usually confused. Is this a community or is it support? So that's why we're seeing that mix. So I thought for myself, why not try to do something that is better and see if Atlassian picks up on it and they can steal that one and do it better also. Yeah. Uh, and I also saw that there are no real communities for people like you and me who are doing uh, the administrative things. We, we usually learn from others that answer a user's question uh, or we meet in person. So I was hoping that by having 
uh, I have four personas on my site that I'm actually building for, and one of them is, for example, the people that build the apps. So if you look at Ravi, for example, who is very good at doing scripting and building applications, and I think you have also announced that you will be building an app with, with Forge, right? Yeah, my wife and I were building something in Forge yeah. right now. So yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious. My wife's actually, she was interested in like, hey, we should make videos because Robbie's videos are great for just like the API calls and stuff, right? Yeah. But there's very, 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 very little content on yes. how to use Forge. And that's and what so I also should... wanted because you probably want some place where you can ask people that they all the technical stuff. And I yeah. don't see that very naturally on the Atlassian community yet. They probably will build it soon. But I think when you get to the tech nerds, um, people that want to talk code, um, people that want to explain how APIs work, or people just want to dive into, I want to set up my first API connection and just build a simple script around it. Uh, I was hoping that I could fill that void somehow. Uh, yeah, and no, also no. having more detail for everyone that starts like you and I did, like playing around and trying things out because that's usually how you start, right? So having some place where you can go with all these tips and tricks, like how do I set the uh, the um, the status is in order rather than having the standard order. It took me six years before I find out that you actually can do that. And we've had a good discussion on the right statuses too and the right workflow. Yep. <laughs> so no, I, I love it. Um, I I think this is. I mean, we obviously have the community that last community, right? But I feel like it's just so big, right? It's four million people in there. Yeah, some it's it's hard, especially for someone new, to maybe even find their footing, find find a good place to just get started, right? Like, and there's yeah, just so and much. It's also, it's also restricted. So if you think of, of all the partners that are there, they're they're kind of held back. Like, don't promote your stuff. Uh, be careful about this. We don't want spam with this one. And I I would rather see the opposite. I would like to have a place where I can see if any app. Uh, any of the app owners have like a sales or something, or if they're coming out with something new, it would be awesome to know that. And right. also to see when, when someone that is brand new, like just created their first app and they want to show the world that, it, it's almost impossible today. You need to spend billions on advertising. If you had a community where you can just go, check this one out, uh, what do you think about this one? Give us feedback. I think that would be awesome. And also, uh, perhaps advertising if someone needs to hire someone or if someone is available mm -hmm. for work, like a consultant. Right. That would also be really good. And if you can tie reviews and stuff like that, uh, that would be awesome, I think. Yeah, no, we definitely got to noodle on this one a little bit more, right? Because I'm very interested in community. Like, one of the reasons why I'm doing this theory is to talk to the members of the community get to know what what drives them i almost jokingly i i've interviewed uh Brittany joiner she's yep. a trello girl um but i was almost like the trello girl. Ah. she's the yeah she's the trello <laughs> girl um but i was kind of half joking i was like you know what after after i'm done with the series i would have interviewed 14 key members of the Alaskan community and i'm like what if i can build like a company with them like can you imagine what we would be able to, like the yep. the knowledge and just the the technical how to's and just everybody's yeah. like strengths and just like build something out of like all the people that are like technically involved, but none of us work for Atlassian, but we yeah. can like build like almost like a, a pseudo Atlassian, mini Atlassian company. Yeah. <laughs> of experts. And, the and the network that comes with that also. We know a lot of yeah. people. So, right. so yeah, I, I think that is a good idea. So, let's yeah, let's do it, Alex. That's yeah. So that's where my mind's at after last night's interview with uh, with Brittany here is like, where do yeah. how do I take this to the next level? Because like hey, yeah, but the community aspect is going to be so big, right? Like again, this is why we're doing this for for narratives and and people people like to follow along and get to know who who they admire and look up to, right? And yeah. and like we we get to influence the community quite a bit, right? And and we get to influence the product line too. So Atlassian does listen and. And at least not to me specifically, but other members of the, the that I've interviewed have been like, "Yeah, last time talked to me about this," and lo and behold, like they updated Jira, <laughs> Jira can now do it or something like that. So but you will have that soon too. You you are now the guy, uh, the YouTube uh, guy. I'm, I'm getting there. Doing... Yeah, it, it's getting there. Um, my very selfishly, um, my first goal was to beat Ravi. I was like, yep. my target was like, let's 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 dethrone Ravi as like the lead YouTuber here. <laughs> And um, just just like uh, maybe two hours ago, another YouTuber emerged. He he runs a channel called Define Agile, okay. but it's very very Jira oriented. And he's got 
He's got maybe 200 more subscribers than me. So I'm like, that's you're my next target. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but ultimately, I'm trying to go after Lamec. I'm trying to go after Moxie now. Moxie's okay. I don't know if you've that's seen his, the Brazilian channel. No, I haven't seen that one. I yeah. have to go check it out. Yeah. Mox, just put in like Moxie Jura, and like he's got almost 30,000 subscribers, but it's all in Portuguese, which is great, right? For the, he's like basically monopolized the Portuguese market. But I'm like, he's like my new aspiration to like my the next challenge that I want to take on. <laughs> yep. So yeah, 50,000 subscribers is what we're trying to get to now. <laughs> yeah, but you are just starting out. I mean, you are doing amazing uh, for, what is it, a year and a half or something? year and like a half. That? Yeah, just in two days will be a year and a half. Yeah. So, so imagine three years. Uh, then you will have, since it's, it's scaling, right? So you will have like forty or sixty thousand subscribers, hundred thousand in five years, no I problem. Know, just, we're we're my, I have a six year old, right? And he's just like, Dad, I just want that silver play button. <laughs> just get yes. us a get us a silver play button. So I'm like, ah, only ninety seven thousand or ninety three thousand more to go. <laughs> uh, it goes fast once you started. It it has been fast. Um, the growth has been really really great. Um, I think we've gotten a lot of good feedback, and I build videos to help people right because i yeah. struggle through them right so i'm not i'm not like sugarcoating anything and i'm not trying to like fluff anything up it's just like here's how you do it <laughs> and here's yeah. why you want to do it right because again but this is where it gets to great conversation right i used to be afraid of like people i don't want to say people like you but i used to be afraid like, the criticism is is tough sometimes right yeah but i don't put anything out there that i that i make up right like everything yeah. that i put out is like hey i you might not agree with it but it's how i ran it and how i've yep. done it and have had success with it right but it's it's sometimes a little bit easier to be polarizing than to just be a people pleaser right and just say yeah. yes to everything so yeah. but yeah that's why i love your comments though because they're always just like yeah you do this correctly <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I'm the kind of guy, I actually like criticism uh, if it's done uh, with the intent to actually uh, open better. a debate or, or uh, showing different perspectives, not just complaining. So I come right. from, I spent quite a lot of year in academia uh, where you actually had that as part of the process. So everything was under uh, review and you got criticized uh, or criticized. And I love it because you always get that other people's feedback and you go like, yeah, they are actually right. Uh, that's a completely per different perspective and I had missed that one. So thank you, uh, because now I can become better and I can learn new things. Yes, yeah. and it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this podcast with the Jura guy, right? Because he's such a Jura person from the data center and I'm yeah. such a Jura person from the cloud. And even though they're basically the same product, not really, but <laughs> supposed yeah. to be, right? Um, he just has a different style, different technique, and does things based on his perspective. And I do things on mine, right? And so when you go online and you're looking at the Elastic community and people are answering the questions, like people have their way of doing Jura and, and administering. And I'm just kind of open to like learning new ways because I, I feel like I've mastered Jura to the point where I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Yeah. Right. But I'm like, but what else can I learn? <laughs> so I'm like, let's learn from our peers. <laughs> I don't think I will ever get to that one because I'm the kind of person who likes to go through every function and see, do I really understand this function? And every day I find, when did they add this? Uh, and how did this happen? And I have to go check the release notes. And what, this has been for four years? When well, I have yeah. never used this. Yeah, but That is also one of the benefits of being in very large instances because you get so many weird requests and they have so many things that you like, I don't think this is even possible. And then you start exploring it and you're like, wow, there's actually a function for this one. Uh, and then you just go like, yeah, but that's awesome. We can use that for all kinds of things. Yeah, it's interesting you bring that up, right? So I like to tell people like the most humbling thing because most of the time I, I come into, a, into the room and I'm like the Jira expert, right? Like I know my thing, but it's humbling, right? It, it, it grounds me, it, it throws me back and sits me down and tells me, Alex, you're not actually not that good. And I go to the Atlassian community and I look at the questions yeah. and I try to answer the questions and half of them, I'm like, half of them, I'm like, why would you want to do that? And then the other yeah. half is like, how do you do that? Yes. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, wow, like there's just so many different ways to just arrive at the same conclusion or just so many yeah. different creative ways to just think about a problem. And I, I just love going there and like just going, you know what, your way of doing things is like a way, but it's not the only way. Yeah. 
and when you like when you when you have a very large instance when you have all these people and they don't really have any process these requests that you see in, or the questions that comes up in the community i have them on a daily basis and you go like what on earth are you actually doing uh, i don't understand what your work is even uh, are you a developer or a tester because yeah. i've never seen this kind of thing before yeah. Yeah, I like to tell people, I'm like, you have a people problem, not a tool problem. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta go figure out your people <laughs> problem first. And, but yeah. so many people, so many companies, they try to fix their people problem because they can't communicate, they don't have any trust. They just they just have a, a not a great culture. They try to compensate by like pulling a yeah. metric or making the tool do it. And I'm like, mm, you'd be better off if you just like learn how to work together. <laughs> yeah. When I worked at H and M, I had uh, uh, a colleague that I worked side by side with. She used to to say this famous quote: "A fool with a tool is still a fool," uh, and we use that quite a lot because we can customize the the tool any way we want, and it won't change the fact that if people don't understand how to use it, they will abuse it. Uh, so we we push that quite hard and say we're not building in, for example. Uh, that your mandatory fields. We don't do that. We train people instead and explain why we do it the way we do. And that worked a lot better. Uh, that, so, that was a tweetable moment right there, Jimmy. A fool yeah. with a tool is just a fool. That's got to yeah. go on one of my Jira shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, uh, that's how it is. And uh, that's also one of the challenges, right? Because uh, when you get these requests, you, you go like, man, I don't even... How do I say this politely? Because what you are, are asking me is so stupid, um, but I somehow need to understand where does that come from? And when you go over to the other side and I go like, ah, but this is why you're doing this one. But yeah, it's, the process is completely wrong. Uh, so let me help you uh, to actually get what you need rather than what you asked for. Yeah, so new section for your Atlantic community, right? It's the therapy. Yeah. <laughs> come, come and get some counseling and uh and come listen to one of the jira therapists <laughs> yeah because okay. yes yeah, i mean sometimes you just gotta like you don't know what you don't know right like you don't know if it's any good this company i worked in companies where it's just it's just the way they've been doing things for the last yeah. 10 15 20 years right and so if you don't know any better and you just kind of like you're thrown into this deep end you're like this is the way they do it i feel like there's a lot of opportunity a lot of market to maybe start helping like executives and stuff like that yeah. think better because a lot of this stems from just again habits of like now you got some executive most most pawns right we're just pawns in this whole game right they're they're afraid to challenge up like and, and it's hard like once yeah. if your director's telling you this is the way to do it they're like well i gotta do it and that that always just gets me man when somebody comes up to me and they're like i need a jira answer and i'm like here's how you do it in jira and they're like mm, my executive didn't like it i'm like you're gonna you're going to jeopardize your experience with the tool in order to satisfy a process that yeah. is made up. <laughs> yes. And one other thing that is also that I experienced that is a big problem is that many that work with the Atlassian tools does not have the mandate to actually dictate the way we work, uh, which means that they will be basically be uh, performers. They, they will just they take an order and then they build it. And then it will just become a big pile of poo uh, eventually yeah. because uh, when they are going like i can't even look at my, co my my setup anymore so i will leave and then the next person comes in and they go like oh i have to fix this and everyone says no this is how we do it and then you just you just go through more, one uh, admin after another because your your setup is just bad so right. that was actually my my assignment at h&m uh, because they split the responsibility into two so you had one group that were actually doing the, the ways of working and one that actually was in response, responsible for the tools. And they thought, this is probably a bad idea. Can you please verify? Uh, so I did that and I verified, yes, that's very stupid. Uh, and then they just said, good, now you fix it. And then I got stuck there doing it. So that's how well, I ended up there. Yeah. So Jimmy, we got to keep going because we're we're almost done here. And I only no, okay. got the first, through <laughs> question number one. I got nine more to go. <laughs> OK, sorry. So, no, no, this is this is great. Maybe we're definitely gonna have to either do uh, go a little bit over if we can, and or do a part two and three later on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I have so, nothing else to do today rather other than great. Playing. Well, then I'll just keep going. We'll, we'll just yep. keep doing it here, right? So, we all know that Jira's dashboards are a little lackluster. Wouldn't it be cool if you could significantly make your metrics and reports better? With custom charts for Jira, you can transform your raw data into stunning charts and graphs that make an impact. No more settling for the default Jira reports or spending hours manually manipulating data in a spreadsheet. 
Go show our friends at Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and show them your support and start a free trial to Custom Charts for Jira today. Um, what's your favorite at last gen memory? What's the, the one thing you cherish the most about your experience in this world? Oh, favorite at last gen memory. Uh, that's a good question. What's that one so thing you can close your eyes and remember yeah. something? Well, it's not really a Lassian memory. It is more of a, uh, it's part of a Lassian. When I was at H&M, uh, I worked with a group of fantastic people in India. Uh, and we worked very tightly together. And when it was my time to leave, uh, we had a small celebration in the office. And there was just a handful there because everyone was busy. And it was just before the summer, so no one really cared to say goodbye. Uh, but I was brought aside um, by my Indian team member and saying, we, we need to talk to you over here. And they brought me into a room and they had a video conference call with India and the whole team, and I think it was like 15 people there, uh, they all gathered, at, and this was not their optimal working hours, but they all said, we want to say goodbye to you properly. And they had like a moment where, where they really celebrated and thanked me for, for my time. And that one felt really special because this wasn't initiated by management in any way. This was my team and my team members that really wanted to say goodbye and that they missed me. So that one was very special for me. And they had a little cake also that says, thank you, Jimmy, uh, that they had made. And uh, so that one was quite nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I know we're talking about you have a people problem or a tool problem, but sometimes the people is what makes it fun, right? Like yes. The, I think it's people. almost always that. Yeah. Uh, so every time you 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 go in somewhere and you see this is so painful, I, I can see that why you don't want to use this tool because it's not set up for you at all. And you spend an hour uh, and you explain this is what we can do for you instead. And they just go like, you really understand what we need. This is amazing. If you can do this, I'm so inspired now to come back to work tomorrow and see this and try this new thing out. That's why I do it. Uh, that's why every time I have that feeling, and I had it yesterday at the very latest uh, when I had a meeting with our security team, uh, and they were like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Uh, we, we have really missed this kind of, of conversation and the inspiration that you just provided you and your team. So that's yeah. what I feel that is the uh, the power behind Atlassian. And not that it's a great tool, but it can actually solve people's real problem that they have uh, and it's very flexible in doing so. Yeah, I was talking to um, Sajit, who's one of the community leaders. He actually had got an opportunity at Team 23 to have dinner with, with the, co the co-founder and, and co-CEO, uh, Mike. And I was like, do you ever think that when Mike and Scott created this Jira thing, like that it would, because I don't see this in any other tools. I've, I'm, I've been in DevOps and IT my whole entire career, right? I don't see yeah. a Jenkins community. <laughs> like, I, I mean, no. there's a there's a forum to help figure out Jenkins questions, but there's not like a there is not a following of people that are do, doing like this level of stuff, right? Where they're like, yeah. hey, let's just help each other out and and build like an actual true community, right? So, so at last, I'm like, do you think that those two guys when they created this thing 20, 20, it was 20 years ago, over twenty years yeah. ago, right? They're like, hey, one day, one day we're gonna use it to track our five year old <laughs> uh, schedule. <laughs> Or whatever you said at the beginning, right? Because you just yeah. have that kid, right? Because I've done yeah. it. My kids do their chores. They they use it, right? We, my wife and I, we stay coordinated with Jura. Like that's the yeah. way. Otherwise, we would lose sanity. <laughs> yes, yeah, but I think when they started, they had the, the perfect mix there. They they really cared. They really wanted to help people, and they realized that if we do it cheap, people will think it's crap. So they made it expensive from the beginning. So then they also had a commitment. People that actually bought into it really got passionate about it. Do you uh, think it would? Um, do you think Jira would have suffered? Like, do you think Jira would be as great as it is today had it been an American company, or no. basically anything not Australian? Is it like their business values and there's just their way of life? Because Australia, I, I love talking to Australian people. They're yeah. on a different level. <laughs> I don't think it's actually a country culture that was the the cause of the success. I think there was these two guys or, or the, 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 the founders there and the first team. genuinely good people. Yeah, I think they were genuinely good people and they really cared about the product and they cared about helping people and they had a good business sense about it that didn't uh, affect the, the uh, what they were trying to actually achieve. 
So I think that was a very rare combination. Uh, and I think because they were from Australia, it was also, we, we don't have a lot of companies, yeah. big companies are coming there. And so it was a little bit exotic as well. Yeah, and they, you... they launched it in the perfect window also. Everyone was looking for this agile tool. Um, that just came out. Too. Yeah. yeah, because you had what, ClearCase, ClearQuest, Rally, but those were three, four, five hundred thousand yeah. dollars <laughs> right? You needed a half a million dollar budget just to be able to afford it. Yeah, just to view it, get the demo. It. I know, right? Yeah, just <laughs> that, that's that's what I always tell people, right? Like the one, the beautiful thing about Jira, right? It's like it's free for anybody to try out, right? Yep. Go to lasting.com, install it, try or sign up and and use it, right? But like version one, you want to use it, you got to call somebody. Rally, yeah. you got to call somebody. Like there's a sales process behind it. And it's like it's not, it's not friendly for, yeah. for people, right? And Jira is like the one thing where a person that has that's running a three hundred billion dollar company can use it just as much as a person that's just trying to manage their garage sale. <laughs> yep. Or a kid yeah, trying like to their homework, right? So it's like it works for everybody. And yeah, uh, you don't you don't I mean other tools can do it, right? I think I'd be able to I'd succeed in like my, you know money.com and stuff, but it's just like yeah. the following here with that last year is just significantly better. <laughs> yes. It's kind of weird that they, they hit that formula so well. Uh, and now they now they are uh, so big that most people have used it uh, compared to any other uh, tool out there. So people are more familiar with it also, which also sells it a, mo a lot more. And it could be that people actually hate it because it was configured completely wrong, uh, but they still know what it is. And that also drives their sales and their, their yeah. everyone that's new that comes in a company, they, they will try it. <laughs> I think I, I think I gotta find a way to start billing at lasting then because you made a comment that just triggered me because I've actually gotten comments on my YouTube channels from people saying like I hate Jura. Yep. Until I saw your video and now it makes sense and now it's my favorite tool. <laughs> yes. But that's usually how it is. I often come in and they say, This is so bad. I'm a developer or I'm a tester and this is complete and utter rubbish. And then you go like, Yeah, but I if I look at your configuration, I understand it takes like 15 clicks to do anything. You have a workflow of 64 steps. And you're a developer. You you probably don't want to touch this at all. And they're like, yes, I don't want to touch it. Good. <laughs> yeah, let's set it up for, for your ID instead. And, uh, and then we figure <laughs> out you have three different workflows, three processes in one workflow. And you go like, of course, this was not going to work because a business need cannot be a test case because there's no one-to-one -one relation in your chain. And then you just rebuild it and I go like, wow, could this actually, is this the same tool? Because now it makes sense for me. Yeah. Or I haven't seen Jira in, in three years because I do everything in my ID. Instead, I just pick out from, from my code editor and just work there. And they were like, you can do that? Yes, of course you can. It, that's, that's a feature. Yeah, that, that was one of the reasons, that was one of my hesitations when I came over to Jira the first time. I was in TFS land at Microsoft's Team Foundation server, and that the IDE, your Visual Studio, had TFS in it. Yep. So you, you wrote code, and it was all right there. Yes. You never left your IDE. So when I came to Jira, I was like, wait, I'm on a browser? <laughs> and then I got to go to a different tab if I want to yep. go to Confluence? Like, what, what is this? Like, why isn't it all just in my IDE? <laughs> so I think that was, that's that was I think that is a little bit how the people who like Azure DevOps also are thinking because they are like, yeah, I have my pipelines there, so and I'm a code. Why should I use anything else? And then I go like, oh, you can have that in Jira as well. Hmm, but you have a documentation system and product discovery. Maybe we should consider to actually look at that as well. Yeah, I think I might have to make some videos too because I'm learning that I I don't code anymore, but it'd be good for me to go back and check like if there's visuals. Because everybody uses like Visual Studio Code now, the the free yep. open source one. I'm like, wonder if there's a way to connect to Jira because that that would be probably a good yep. video on on just like how making Jira easier for developer series. <laughs> yes, but now that you're gonna build an app, then you can actually use that one to uh, for training. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of our thing, right? We're trying to eat our yep. own dog food, and and we got everything in Jira. We're tracking things, requirements, yep. everything. So it's awesome. Um, I love this stuff. All right, uh, biggest lesson you've learned since you started out. You've obviously been in this game for a while here, and yeah. what's your biggest lesson learned? Don't change or the name. Or of, <laughs> yeah, don't change the name of the open status. <laughs> uh, Talk to me about part, that. Let's unpack that. <laughs> yes, 
I don't know why this was uh, quite uh, not that early, uh, maybe 2004 or something like that. So I had been doing it for a couple of years and I was probably tired and I was changing a workflow and rather than create, just picking another status, uh, I didn't want to use the open as the starting status. Right, so I renamed it. And it took about 20 minutes and one of my colleagues who was also uh, the admin for the year came and kind of on my shoulder a little bit and they were like, did you by any chance screw anything up right now? And I was like, no, what do you mean? Well, no one can work um, because everyone used open as the first status, right? And now it was broken in everyone. And I was like, oh crap, I'm sorry. And But fortunately, <laughs> it's very easy to, to fix. Yeah. This, this is an that, is, that is apparently a very common mistake because I've seen it been done twice uh, in the past six months, um, and it also screwed up a lot of things. Yeah, I love this one because one, I always tell, I, I coach a lot of uh, Jira admins and stuff, right? And I'm like, if you want me to fire you, go change the status, rename the status. <laughs> yeah. That is between that and making a field required in your default field configurations yeah. and the screens, it's not in everybody else's screen. Those are my two fireable offenses. <laughs> yep. If you want to get fired on the spot, rename a status and or make a field required. <laughs> that that's yeah, and, Or make something global. We had an incident where someone had, uh, it was a field, uh, a custom field that was global. All projects had it, even if it wasn't configured in the screen. And it automatically required to have a, a person that didn't exist anymore in the company. Uh, so when we when we cleaned up some users, that user went away uh, because it was disabled, and suddenly it couldn't be found. And every project in the entire instance now got an error message that said you cannot do this in the screen. And they had no idea what we're talking about because that field didn't exist. Yeah, so I, I I've seen a similar problem where in your project settings, if you set a default assignee, yeah, so they become the assignee for for every issue as it gets created. But then you let go of that person. Well, then you can't create issues anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's a hard one to find. It is. Yeah. It has taken me, like, every time that I get exposed to it, I was like, what? No, I fixed this before. <laughs> yes. So I'm always curious, uh, or I try to make sure that everyone understands. If you create custom fields, make sure that you don't make them global, ever, unless we decide that this is a new standard for everyone to use. Just create them for the specific projects that want now. to have them. But now you got me curious because I've never, I didn't even know you can make these global. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta, you go I gotta go see. <laughs> ah, learning new things every day. Yeah. Um, if if you can pick one plugin from the marketplace, which one's your go to plugin? Like, which one has to be in every single Jira that you touch? Script runner. Script runner. Okay. Yeah. That's two I people have think, script runner. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could because it has so many things, especially if you're in data center, then it has so many. Uh, their fragments and and things like that they are so great because i don't know how many times i've had people saying i i would like to just have a button to click and i want to create something in another product and you go like yeah i can probably create a function for it and do an automation and with fragments you can just make that and it's super easy it takes 10 minutes to do and you can just watch ravi's videos uh, it's i See, love so it. script, script burn is one of those tools where it's like it's like easy bi right it's just so oh it's so powerful yeah that it's overwhelming and like i i usually just like you know i put like a cover on because i'm like i don't i don't understand how this thing works <laughs> i don't yeah. want to understand how this thing works and it's just like yeah. it's scary uh, yeah but it's it's only scary the first couple of times when you try to use it before you understand or you've tried it a couple of times then you just go like why haven't i used this all the time Things like, uh, I wouldn't like to have a, a custom field. It's almost the same, but I want to name them differently. Well, then I have to create a new uh, custom field for the naming, or, or I will just tell them, just ignore the, the, the name or the label for it. And with script running, you can just change that if you want. So every project can have their own labels for it. it might be time to start giving script runner some love and conquering my, my fear of, of script running. <laughs> Yeah, you should probably take a session with Ravi because he is an expert on, on script runner, and I've learned a lot from his uh, his videos. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely gonna. Uh, it's just again, it's been one of those things where I'm like, I don't want to touch script runner because it just scares, <laughs> scares but me. That, but if it wasn't something that I I I I have to have, something I would like to have, then it's uh, Office three six five for Jira, uh, because it costs quite a bit. Um, but I don't understand why not everyone is using it because it's amazing, especially for support purposes. So I've had 
three companies, I think, that uh, were really struggling because they had main conversation and tried to tie it together with Jira, and they were like copying and stuff like that. And I just showed them, could this be some a solution for you? And they were like, you are godsend. Uh, <laughs> this is exactly what we need to have. Yeah. So that one is also one of my favorites, but I don't see it used uh, as much as I would hope it would be. Okay. Well, a couple more questions here. If you could change anything from Atlassian, what would it be? Change something. Well, I don't think I would like them, yeah, one thing I would like them to actually do is to take scaling seriously, uh, because I, I'm still a little bit annoyed over the fact that they have hidden limits like 5,000 uh, uh, subtask or, or stories in a board. And it's like, why do you even have issues. these? A thousand issues in an import. <laughs> yeah, this is like, it's ridiculous. I mean, I come from an e-commerce uh, perspective, right? We are handling millions, uh, tens of millions of, of products. There's no problem with it. And from a technical perspective, there's actually no problem handling these massive amounts of, of tickets. Uh, it's just that they haven't actually built that type of architecture in because they come from an agile perspective where you don't have that many issues. Right. The thing is, we are not, most companies don't do agile the way agile is supposed to do. Uh, so they are kind of messing around with it and they usually have a lot of tickets or issues. Uh, so I've seen people that have more than 10,000 issues in, in a project, for example. It's not, not strange. It's not the way it's supposed to be, but uh, some people but, use it that way. How do you feel about that though? Because like, I always tell people, I'm like, because you're absolutely right. Like most companies that claim to be agile do not do agile. <laughs> no. Like, right. But it's like, why did you pick an agile tool then? <laughs> like, go do yeah, it. I, I think the, the problem is that uh, Atlassian, I don't see it as an agile tool really, uh, because they could take, uh, right now they have two terminologies that actually says that they're agile. They have the Kanban and, and Scrum. Oh. These are the only two things that are actually agile in there uh, because the rest is just, it's a tool. So if they would rename that to have uh, continuous delivery and uh, iteration-based boards, then it wouldn't be an agile tool anymore. Then it will be a universal tool and everyone would use it. Uh, so I think that because people, most companies say we are agile uh, and they really think that um, and then they try to work with it and they realize, yeah, agile for us is we have like 15 months uh, of planning and then we dump everything into a project and we do our best to actually deliver yeah. it. But we have standups, uh, so we are agile, so we are cool. Yeah. Uh, so I think that more companies than not actually think that they are doing well uh, in, a, in a Scrum or Kanban board because the terminology is there, but in reality, right. they are just, I don't know, I call it ad hoc, uh, that they work in a more ad hoc version. So they, they plan it up until they could actually build it, and then they just dump it or shoot from the hip, and then they hope that it works. It lands. Yeah, so yeah. two, two follow-up questions with that then, right? One is, I 100% agree with you, right? I, 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 I think I get that feedback a lot of like, you're just a waterfall team sprinting. Yep. Right. You stuck your, you stuck your, you have your plan from, from like your Microsoft project, and all you yep. did was like stick it in two week increments here. Yep. <laughs> like, and that's it. Like, but you still have your fifteen month plan. <laughs> just like yes. uh, you're just looking at it two weeks at a time. Which okay, sure, but that doesn't make you agile in any way. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but with that said though, um, Atlassian, this this is kind of, I'm trying to find the right word choice because. I'm not an agile pierce by any any stretch of the imagination. I I respect agile, but at the end of the day, if I'm gonna pony up a million, ten million, hundred million dollars, right? I want to know exactly how my ten million dollars are being spent. I yes. don't care about your sprinting. I don't care about your estimates. Yeah. I want to know what are you doing with my ten million dollars, and when do I expect a return? Yes. Right. That's what every bottom line. That's that's what every company that's in it for yes. making a profit cares. And the ways of agile don't align with that. There's nothing, yes. there's nothing that helps us with these things. Yeah, and we should remember when we say Agile, this is mostly Scrum that we're talking about. And Scrum right. was yeah, Scrum, yeah. Scrum, for... yeah, let's be specific, yeah. Scrum yeah. doesn't help us, right? Scrum is very much like two, I like to tell people, one, one quarter mile at a time, yeah. and you might go in the wrong direction because you don't yes. have the foresight to see where the heck are we going. <laughs> yeah, the problem with Scrum is it is detached. It is designed for teams uh, with only a team focus. It has no, nothing with requirements. It's nothing with budgets. 
nothing like that involved yeah. in it. Uh, right, but the second you try to scale it, then Jira yeah. also starts to crumble a little bit, right? Because yeah. it doesn't have all the you can't do like a PI planning for it, right? Like no. you can't do you can't do any of the safe stuff. So it's it's interesting. Like I almost feel like if Jira's if Jira's not gonna do if companies don't want to do Scrum, because <clears throat> again it's very limiting. Yeah. But then Jira's like the tool of choice, and I should be able to craft my Jira so that it applies to the principle that I want to follow. Yes. And that is probably what they are. Uh, have been trying to do, uh, but they are still stuck in there because Atlas in themselves is an agile company and they really embrace that. And yeah. they are also, uh, they they realize that they have a gap because when I talked to Tangi, uh, the, the director for Perk Discovery, and I was asking like, now we have this Perk Discovery that is like middle, where when we, we get the levels above that one, the finance part. It's called product discovery usually lead to a discussion about finance and then you fund it and then it goes to production. Uh, and he said that we don't have that at Atlassian because that is missing. And uh, they have nothing. They come uh, basically from the team level and up to a lower management. So product management is kind of where they end. And then they have put a line then on top, which is more of a, I don't know what I should call it. Uh, I don't even know what it is really because there's no way to test it properly. But yeah, no, there's no way not, to... Unless yeah, you got a million dollars, you're not using Jira online. Yeah. But they have the gap there. So now um, things like big picture and uh, to some degree advanced roadmaps is kind of where people are trying to find that portfolio management. But it's still too low. Uh, people need to have it uh, higher up. So I think yeah, that's, yeah, that's portfolio a big gap. Yeah, portfolio management is definitely a big area that's lacking in, in Alaskan. And I see a lot of demand for it. Yeah. A lot. But but at the same time, like it's kind of disheartening, disheartening too, right? Because I see Atlassian, like Atlassian's huge on team, right? Obviously, their yeah. their their ticket, their, their events called team, their Nasdaq or whatever stock exchange thing they're on is team, yeah. Right, so they believe in team, and and I feel like a lot of the decisions that they make today is to enable collaboration, which is fine, yeah. I think they're putting aside any processes, any methods, frameworks. Yes. Right. Which, and I think, and think but that I think we need one, a framework. Yeah, but yeah, I agree. And I think that is a lot of uh, what we see in the agile uh, movement uh, also across the globe that uh, we have two levels now. We have the, uh, the people that wants to be more ad hoc. They don't want to be restricted or they don't want to have responsibility. They want to be free to actually in explore whatever they want to do. And then you have the ones that realize that Scrum is basically the emperor's new clothes. It, it doesn't work. Uh, you yeah. need to have something else there also, because it's just a bunch of rituals. And if you don't have a process, you have no frame. Right? You have no steering for it. Uh, so that's why I'm seeing a lot of people, a lot of larger companies here in Sweden, for example, they are now stop talking about Scrum. They are now stop talking about Agile. And they are more talking about processes because the more people are working from home, the more obvious it is. We need to have some way of controlling and steering because we can't just pop into someone's group and just say how are things going or when can we have feature number five uh, in production. So then they need to have a little bit more control over it. So I think that for me, Scrum is uh, it. It had its moment. Uh, it, it changed a lot of things for the better but it is not the magic bullet. It has never been the magic bullet because every time it succeeds, it's because of the teams, not because of Scrum. Yeah, I'm I'm a huge firm believer, right? If you if you get a true leader in front of a group yeah. of people, they'll rally, yep. they'll rally behind that leader and they'll do whatever it takes. Like yep. weekends, nights, whatever. If they buy into a vision and a mission that you put in front of them, Jira and stuff, like it's just, cool but the people will deliver like yes. they will come together and build something but and they so want to be involved don't... and they want to be engaged they want to be informed uh, so if they right. know why are we building this or what are we trying to achieve and they feel that people are listening to when we are talking from design perspective or from development perspective and they explain this is what we can do with the tool kind of like what we do when we do for our customers this is what we can do uh, then we can build awesomeness then people will be happy at work. They will feel that they are involved and they want to deliver this because most people that work in our industry, they are there because they want to solve problems. They want to help people uh, and they want to do it with awesome technology tools or designs. 
But the problem is that you can implement Scrum and then you can still have a shitty project manager, for example, that doesn't tell you anything. He just, this is what we're building. And then you have this feature factor where everyone is just, I will go to work tomorrow, I will build whatever they tell me to build, but I'm not engaged, I'm not happy at all. So I usually tell people that it doesn't really matter what framework or methodology you use. At the end of the day, it's people. And agile with the lower caps is actually about communication and engagement. So if we want to succeed, we need to break down the silos uh, between the different levels in the corporation and make sure that people communicate. Uh, and when people communicate, they usually want to help each other. So that's what I see is the future for for whatever that comes next after yeah. Scrum. We're gonna have to, yeah. We're gonna have to definitely collaborate here because as a two, three, five year vision, like, I, because I've always dreamt. I have this thing on my whiteboard here where for the last three years, um, I used to work at this defense contractor here in the U.S. where we had a we had a process, we had a way to effectively deliver multi million dollar projects on time and on schedule. It was rigorous and it was, it wasn't for the weak part, if you yeah, will. Right? It, it required. It required you to buy in. It required you to to like believe in yeah. this and like roll up your sleeves and and do whatever it took. Yeah, but obviously it's you can't do that in a sustained period, right? You can't do that for every project because you know we're human. But for for a keep and and I think Apple's success, right? If you look at the Apple company, like a lot of their success was because of the drive that yeah. Steve Jobs and almost fear <laughs> that he yeah. gave everybody, right? But that's how you ended up with market. We're defining products like an iPhone, yeah. right? Um, but yeah, like it just, I don't see any tools or processes today helping you like recreate that magic. No. And so I'm like, I, I've had this process up on my board here. I'm like, one day I'm going to make like my own agile <laughs> and my own tool that is just well, like effective, right? It just gets things no. done. <laughs> I've actually done the same. I started writing it multiple times, even tried to do a book about it. And so I actually have a domain name for it also. So it's, oh. uh, mine well, I'm, gonna to, to, yeah, I'm gonna have to connect you. I'm, I'm working with this lady. She works in. She was works. She lives yeah. in Iceland, and she's on a similar mindset too. So I'm putting together like a team. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. If we can do okay. the new. We're the new. To, yeah, we're gonna have to start exploring this. Okay, so we really <laughs> are going here way over. So we're just gonna last last two questions here. What excites you the most about the future of Atlassian? I think that what excites me most is uh, I have two tools that they are using that I see will be the future uh, five years from now, and that is product discovery and assets. They are very underused at the moment. And I think the reason or the fact that they actually move into those areas, uh, that I, I have a good feeling about that one. Uh, so now I'm just waiting for them to buy like big picture or something like that and build also the product management type and coming up to portfolio. Yeah. Um, but I think overall, the fact that they are building so many things now and they see that we are not just a task management and a wiki, uh, we are now actually having a full product suite. I think that is very encouraging. And the pricing is not so encouraging, but uh, the, the, the stand <laughs> yeah. that they are building in now is kind They've of- come a long um, way from when it used to cost $10 for Jira in perpetuity. Yes. <laughs> So last question here, just to kind of wrap this up. First of all, thank you so much, Jimmy, for taking the time here. But where can people find you? Talk to us about what you're building, Where what what are your initiatives here, and where can people find you online? Yeah, where can you find me online? I'm on Twitter, of course. Uh, I have two accounts on Twitter, so one with my name and one with the Atlastic. So right now I'm using the Atlastic one the most. Uh, I am also building the community, atlastic.com, and I have my own website, jimmyweekman.com. Uh, so you can find me there as well. Uh, I'm I'm probably anywhere that you have any form of social media uh, presence. I have an account there. Uh, Instagram. I'm I'm mostly looking through. Uh, I don't post very often. Uh, other than that, my YouTube channels, of course, this is where I have most engagement. I think. Uh, where else can you find me? You can find me online. Uh, like we are doing here. So I, I tend to actually have a couple of meetings every month or something like that with people that uh, discuss, for example, uh, Agile. I had a long meeting about that one. 
Uh, so if someone wants to discuss like we are doing here, they can reach out also and, and have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, whenever I have the time. Cool. So I will put links to channels and the Elastic community and everything down below in the description. So Jimmy, thank you so much for taking the time here. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad that it only took us like a year and a half to get to this point. But <laughs> you, like you, like Rodney, were one of my very first supporters here. We were the first people that jumped on, started giving me that positive reinforcement of like I wasn't smoking some crack and that I should continue to do what I was doing. <laughs> and so thank you so much for for being a believer early on. And um, I don't think I would have gotten this far if it wouldn't have been like for support from you and, and the Jira guy. And so thank you, Jamie, for for always being there and. And adding those comments and and um, and and helping me out grow. So yeah, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy that you have have come so far that you have, and I look forward to that 100,000 plaque to bring that one up. <laughs> and uh, when you get the one million, I will probably have a thousand followers also. Something. <laughs> when I get to the million, we're gonna have to have a big party if I ever get yeah. that far. And I'm, we're going to throw the biggest party ever if I get to a million. Yep. And that's it for Jimmy's interview. As I mentioned, such a wealth of information. And do please make sure you go check out his Atlassian community. Go become an active participant there. It's a great place to get to know other Atlassian folks and also maybe get your questions answered. Take control of your data. Custom Charts for Jira offers an extensive range of chart types and customization options, whether it's a bar chart, pie chart, or line chart, or pretty much a bunch of other different types of charts that they have. Create stunning visuals that represent your data in Jira accurately, tailored specifically to your specific needs. Head on over to the Elastic Marketplace and show Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and start a free trial of Custom Charts for Jira today. If you did find value out of this video though, I do want to recommend that you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value, and also please make sure you comment if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need